actually know that he does have a he does have an issue with sleepy. Yeah. But and uh, what is that what does that turn out to look like? <laughs> he has an issue with black people. Oh well that's not that's not I'm abnormal. Fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, when you get a dog that doesn't see somebody of that, of that skin color, uh -huh. and, and then all of a sudden they see them, it's like really shocking to yeah, them. Yeah. And then um, it's obviously not all of them, but um, there, uh, I think that there is a tendency uh, uh, with black people to be a little bit more afraid of dogs because of the typical reaction that mm -hmm. they get from dogs that haven't seen a lot of black people. So yeah. it's a positive feedback loop, and they just right. it keeps making the situation worse. And so. You can break that pretty easily. I mean, if you get a person that is not afraid of dogs, mm -hmm. you know, of, of that, you know, of that uh, melatonin count, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> then uh, then then you can get the dog to understand that that's, you know, that it's not a huge big deal. Okay. And so, uh, tell me his name again. I have it on the list. Rusty. Rusty. Hi, Rusty. You're you very beautiful. Oh, yes, you are. Yeah, we know he's part lab, we don't know what the other part is. Maybe they think Petita, but... Um, he's definitely got that wintry coat. <laughs> yeah. He's an exploit. Yes, he was an exploit. And so, you said whenever whenever there is other dogs that come into the area, he gets... Yeah, now, so when he when he got attacked by the pit bull, uh -huh. they came from not this house here, but the house next to them. Right. And so their dog, who is the true love for them to get along with, he comes from the same direction as us. Yeah. And he will not tolerate it. Right. So well, goes right after Okay. And, and what? goes right after Yeah, so there hasn't been any fights necessarily afterwards? He just is claiming his territory? I think so. He grabs him. He grabs him. Oh, he does? He bites at him? Oh, yeah. Oh, he bites. Okay. He did the other day. And 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 like full punctures or? Uh, little, yeah, he did a little puncture there, and then um, I don't know. We tried to introduce him. No, he got loose. So we both have invisible fences. Mm -hmm. But as you know, yeah, they they can get through them if they really want to. Yeah, the invisible fence. Um, the wire goes through the ground, and there is a. It's like a, it, it, it acts as like a, a tube of space where the signal will catch, mm -hmm. um, but the dog can go over it. Oh yeah, and yeah. he does go over and, it. And they can go through it too. I well, mean, if they're yeah. a tough dog in Labradors, yeah. and whatever he's mixed with, I would assume is probably going to be a fairly tough dog. Um, so sometimes they can deal with that. Although I find that uh, physical toughness and dealing with electrical stimulation uh, don't coincide. I mean, like there's, like a dog doesn't necessarily have to like you can't tell by how big or small or mm -hmm. dense the dog is on whether they're going to deal with the electricity yeah. very well. So, um, so I mean, he's he's really good about staying. Like joggers will go. He can go probably close to the flagpole. Yeah. Oh, that's my husband. Gary. How we doing? And uh, so he's, they're pretty good, all of them, about staying. Does he bark at joggers? Oh yeah. Like excited, they, they excited all, bark though. N n yeah, not yeah. a not a vicious bark or anything. Mm -hmm. So does our um, great Pyrenees, and mm -hmm. so does our little Pomeranian now. Right. Uh, but yeah, so they can go that far, and he does. I mean, for the most part, he stays mm -hmm. within the perimeter, which we got I think three acres right. um, for the invisible fence. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, he forgets, and we put the collar back on him. Yeah until he remembers again. Yeah. Uh, what's the purpose of taking the collar off? Oh, just so he's more comfortable. Yeah. Um, generally with those with those uh, in-ground fence ones, yeah. uh, you, you, you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to have them quite as tight as mm -hmm. the, um, the e-collars. Mm -hmm. um, like if you're doing an actual remote mm -hmm. collar, yeah. um, you don't necessarily have to have them quite as tight, but especially with the extra skin that he's got on his neck, it shouldn't bother him at all. I mean, okay. I, I've never seen a Labrador yeah, that had a whole lot of issues. I just took it off this morning because I knew you would come and I should have left it on. It does, it, I just, the way that I like to think about those kind of pieces of equipment is they're, they're like insurance mm -hmm. as opposed to, it, you know, as yeah. opposed to an active, like steering wheel. Like if you're thinking in cars, it's more like insurance. Yeah. Um, and so you don't cancel your insurance when you don't have a... That's true. You know, because insurance true. is always just the slightest bit uncomfortable because I don't want to pay it. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we don't cancel it uh, yeah. when we haven't had an issue. And especially whenever we have uh, the ability to do, you know, for him to have 
big problems with mm -hmm. other dogs. I, I would I would just leave it on all the time. Okay. I would just yeah. as long as anytime he's outside, I would have it on him. Have it on him. So yeah. um, so he comes and goes. So I just keep it on him all the time. Yeah. Because I mean we uh, mm -hmm. we don't cage him, mm -hmm. uh, but they do have a dog room. Yeah. That and they we can close them up, but we don't because at night. It, Especially Winston, he's a protector, mm -hmm. and uh, so they chase things. How does how how is the relationship between him and the oh, other dogs? They get, they're great, and yeah. see that we moved here three years ago, and the dog came with the house. This one? No. Oh. The Great Pyrenees. Gotcha. Uh, they were trying to find. They were downsizing, trying to find a home. They couldn't find a home, so we said we'd take him. Yeah. <clears throat> but they got along great from day one. Right. No, no issues whatsoever. Right. Well, that's good. Well, I mean, he he had his issue with the pit bulls here, right? Yeah. Yes. After. Yes. After meeting the other one, so yeah, I would stand to reason that they wouldn't have any issues with these yes. other because it sounds to me like this is directly related to that event. Uh, I absolutely agree. Well, I mean, and if I went to a place and it caused me to get beat up real bad and everything, yeah. then I would get a little. Yeah. They cautious were, about it. I mean, yeah. it's, except for except for when it comes to dog bites, apparently, because <laughs> because that doesn't. Uh, well, I mean, I, that's what I do. I, I deal yeah. with aggressive dogs. So. Yeah. <laughs> and but it, it split his ear. Yeah. And I think on his nose. Anyway, he had to wear the cone shame. Yeah. But um, I didn't realize, and I should have. I just thought maybe. He was just being territorial, mm -hmm. but then even even when I went to the vet, when you could go inside, right, uh, he wouldn't tolerate dogs there either. I had to really put a grip on him and tell mm -hmm. him to calm down. Right. So, and so, can you get him calmed down in the presence of other dogs? Only if he's on a leash. Uh, right. But I haven't tried it with him, and he wasn't on a leash. He mm -hmm. will not obey me when we try to call him off. Right. Because once he's gone, he's gone. Right. That's, yeah, and that's going to be one of those things that you have, um, once the excitement gets past a certain point and mm -hmm. they've given in to the, the process, mm -hmm. then, uh, then you're going to have, you're going to have trouble getting him to stop unless you have some sort of, and that's going to be part of the process is just making sure that we have control in the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, that that we have the ability to communicate to the dog that hey your behavior is the problem and it's not that i'm anxious about this other dog it's i'm i'm anxious about your behavior mm -hmm. and and that's one of the things that um, is a very common thing that people don't necessarily do very well um what the dogs do well um mm -hmm. whenever they communicate with each other they they will very clearly say hey you're my issue not mm -hmm. not this other thing and they'll the, and they use that with positioning and uh, the way that they're facing and so we'll want to learn how to do that and then we'll also want to learn how to just have good steady control of him in the presence of other dogs mm -hmm. so um we also whenever we're dealing with the leash i mean he's a big strong boy mm -hmm. and uh we'll want to make sure that we have a tools in place that will give him enough reason to chill out and mm -hmm. quit without you having to wrestle and strain and mm -hmm. and all of that because that's the 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 easier of a time you have controlling him, the better that he is going. The, the better his opinion of you is going to be. He's mm -hmm. going to look at you as as strength, mm -hmm. you know, and somebody who can yeah. handle him. And then, then whenever that happens, then he will tend to listen quite a bit mm -hmm. more, uh, even in tense situations. Yeah. So, I mean, he's so. very protective of me. We were in the post office, not this one, we were in Troy. Mm -hmm. FedEx guy came in. He was fine. I had him on the. They have a little hook while you're paying your bill. Right. He was fine. FedEx guy said hello to him. Mm -hmm. And he, FedEx guy, walked behind me to give him their stuff. And he reaches over my shoulder and does this. He bared teeth. I don't know why he would do that. Why? Why would the guy reach over your shoulder like that? <laughs> he was trying That's... to say more to the dog. Yeah. You know, but yeah. oh, he was waving at the dog. Yeah, but yeah. he didn't take it that way. Well, I'm, to be 
and that was okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. Let him. I, I don't. I don't. I wouldn't get too fussy about that. Now, you want to be able to turn it off if you have the. You know, if you have the situation. I mean, if he decides he wants to get nasty with it, and then we can we can scoot him back mm -hmm. gently and effectively. Yeah, and he 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 did. Uh, I was able to you know calm him down. Of course, once once the guy took his arm, he was fine. Right. When he took his arm away. Yeah, well, he was just warning. I mean, like, that's how dogs communicate. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. sometimes that, you know, that'll be the case. He'd be like, hey, I don't like what you're doing. You know, and then that, and, and, the, and then people change their behavior, and then it stops happening, and then he lets go. He's like, okay, that's it. And we want to communicate the same way with the dog, mm -hmm. very momentarily. Like, mm -hmm. hey, I don't like that. Okay, you're good now. You know, very mm -hmm. moment to moment. That's how dogs live. Dogs live in little 1.3 second increments hmm. over the course of their life. Like everything is just a collection of moments. Wow. Um, and so when the moment is good, situationally, mm -hmm. then the dog is good. When the moment is bad, situationally, then the dog is bad. Mm -hmm. Now we need to be able to teach him that when he his behavior changes, that we're upset with him for that in that moment and mm -hmm. then as soon as he has stopped then that's that's the that's the end of it you mm -hmm. know um and, and that's that's one of the principles that we work with so um i'm going to grab some equipment and uh i'm going to let my dog in the front seat so that he can see him a little bit okay so that to to see what what happens with that oh. make sure i have it have something in here for us. Ow. I don't suppose you could have me that sun dry. Awesome. Breakfast to champions. Are you familiar with this piece of equipment? Are you familiar with this piece of equipment? Looks like oh, yeah, we have one. You do have one? Yeah, they put it on the brake parenting, which that dog is so gentle, it didn't need that. Right. Well, not all, not all dogs do need that, so nope. Um, so th this piece of equipment looks like a torture device and um, it gets people all stirred up about it and mm -hmm. everything but it's actually built and it looks the way that it looks so that it can be as gentle as possible okay. to the dog. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have it sized properly. If it's mm -hmm. too loose, you can hurt the dog. Yeah. If it's sized properly, there's zero chance of it hurting the dog. Okay. Um, the other option that we have for situations like that is just using a simple slip lead. And that will add a little bit of control to the situation because when you use a slip lead, it can go, it can go up higher in the on the neck than mm -hmm. that flat collar ever will because that flat collar will settle. He hasn't even noticed the dog yet. Huh. <laughs> well, I bet he has actually. I mean, he's 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 over there making noise, and dogs hear a lot better than we do. Ah. And his 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 energy has changed just a touch, not terribly, which is great. So whenever we have something like this, mm -hmm. it can go all the way up around the, oh. the neck. And then if you control up high on the neck, mm -hmm. then you have control of the head. And then when the head, whenever you can control the head, the rest of the body follows. And then it makes it a lot easier because you're taking, whenever his head's down, he can pull a lot harder. And especially if the thing that he's pulling against is around his chest, mm -hmm. you know, is around the lower part of his neck. And everything that gives them a lot more leverage to be able to pull whereas with this you can go straight up with it mm -hmm. and it'll pull its head up and then you can think if somebody was pulling your head up how much torque are you going to get exactly. on the ground yeah. not much so um so that that's another option um i tend to like first of all these things i like them for two reasons is number one the dog will pay attention to them more than something like a slip lead right here oh, okay. and then on top of that you're actually more likely to damage the dog with either one of these two devices as opposed to this one because they're built to spread the pressure out. Okay. okay so the dog likes it less but it works more effectively okay all right but it but it's but it's safer for them so um and it, you'll find people out there that'll argue that point but they just don't they they're, they're people that don't use these ever and so yeah. they don't have any That's 
my, my husband, he said, I cannot believe they put that on that dog. Right. So these are actually designed to be kinder to the dog, but at the same point, the dog likes them less, so therefore they're effective to discourage mm -hmm. a behavior. And if you can be effective when discouraging the behavior and the dog wants to avoid the end of this collar more, then they don't offer the behavior that causes them issue. Mm -hmm. and, and so if they don't offer the behavior, then number one, nope. Now we see cinch. Nope. Yep. <laughs> hey. So when we get into the situation where he is getting intense on the dog, then my job is to oppose between, mm. you know? And I know that that seems like a, a rough situation um, and, and, it's, and, and you don't want to be between two dogs that are trying to fight. Right. But the thing about it is, is if he's interested in that dog, he's not going to come after me. Mm -hmm. He's not like they, I mean, now it's not that it can't happen. Right. But it does, it doesn't happen very much. And so we get to the point where we have the ability to say, hey, no, your anxiety is my issue. I'm okay with that dog. Anything that we turn our back to mm -hmm. in nature, the um, that's what animals, the animals do not turn their back on something that they're anxious about in nature, period. Like it just doesn't happen. So I'm gonna let that hang. In fact, why don't you, why don't you hold him with this leash instead? Okay. And so if he gets to the point, if he gets to the point that, you know, he starts doing it, take a shorter leash, you know, something like that, and then just go up with it. Mm -hmm. so you see how it kind of, yeah. you know, and that works. Okay. Um, and then we can look at this, but I, I want to give him a full view of that, see how he reacts to the, to the presence of another dog. Do you care if I if we uh, try this out? Yeah, no, don't okay. yeah. This would be the most effective and just to keep everybody as safe as we can. You think, boy, you have a big old neck. I wasn't expecting that. I deal with a lot of dogs that are not arrows that are quite a bit taller than him and don't have all the neck that he's got. Mm -hmm. That's a bad thing for you, but... Nope. So you can do the same thing with your body posture, like I can mm -hmm. walk in on him, and that's and, and that works as well. I mean, that way, obviously, nobody carries the stick around all day long, every day. That doesn't make any sense. Right. But um, the stick is just to give you more confidence if you if you need it. Yeah, that's a good dog. You're a good boy. You're just doing your job, trying to protect your mom, aren't you? Let's take this one off. And, uh, Wrong. Now this will be the optimal tool. So, okay. Now, before we before we get any further, mm -hmm. take this one off. Uh, before we get any further, I would like to see how he reacts to the prong, just to make sure. If you don't mind me taking. No, it. Oh yeah, no, no, so, yeah. I just wanted to see if he's going to have a conniption mm -hmm. at the pressure. He also will probably have less reaction with me because he's not protective of me. Right. He doesn't know me. Right. And so with uh, that gives me the opportunity to get him in the presence of the dog first without you having to be a factor. What a good dog. We can give him a little bit of space to investigate and see how that turns out. You think, Bubba? <coughs> so all these little things. Whenever we're, whenever we have an anxiety like that, we want to step it up nice and slow. Mm -hmm. We don't want to get too fast in the way that we go. And that's where um, we're going to have a little bit different issue or a different process with the idea of him just roaming free all the time. Mm -hmm. Because if we, if we do the things that we need to do to curb this situation, but then. It, it, we obviously can't be doing them 24-7 all day, every day. Right. So um, what we can do is, is we can contain situations where he could get into trouble and minimize those mm -hmm. um, and then have more time where he's supervised out here um, so that so that something doesn't come and happen while we're not paying attention. Right. And it reinforced the, 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 um, 
aggressive behavior and the territorial behavior that mm -hmm. he ends up having. Um, so that's going to be one of the keys whenever we go forward in this. Mm -hmm. So. responsibility for it. So, so this is, I mean, this is good. That, I mean, like, you handle that fairly well. Now, I understand that it's not the same approach as the dog running up from from the neighbor's yard. Right. And that um, is going to be a different kind of situation because um, he, this dog was brought in in a car, mm -hmm. and it doesn't look like the situation that caused him problems in the past. Right. So, um, but as far as the ability to be around, as far as the ability to be around boy, another dog, he has the capacity. Mm -hmm. And so what we need to do is we just need to have the, um, we have need to have the uh, safeguards in place in order to make sure that we can have these interactions very calmly. And then if he, his energy changes and he gets to the point where he gets real stirred up about something, that we can that we can get him back to center, right. allow him to understand that we could be in the presence of, of other dogs, and, and that's, that's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Like, nobody's getting hurt. Right. It's not a big situation. Yeah. Yeah. He's been good, though. Very, very happy with that. Good. situation petting is one of the key things that we're gonna want to do is like well, you can use food to um, help him create a better uh, more positive experience with the you know with, with in the presence of something else but petting tells a whole different signal petting says that I like the energy that you have and his energy is the thing that we're going to be really looking at more than anything it's not so much about behavior which we can get good behavior with them and we can make sure that we have tight obedience and stuff like that but that that'll be that'll be the area for treats when we're dealing with the the process of getting reacclimated with dogs and and breaking the conception that all dogs in my yard are bad mm -hmm. you know then we then petting is going to be more of a thing because it works on a whole different um brain chemical the, the, the brain chemical for food is dopamine, and dopamine is something that causes you to take action. Okay. And then the brain chemical for um, petting is called oxytocin, and that's more of a like a love family chemical. It's the same chemical that causes women to go into labor um, and causes the bonding between mother and infant mm. and, um, and things of that nature. Um, so it says a very different thing to the dogs, and it also is a much more long-lasting chemical. It's not something that it's not something that 
comes and goes real fast. It's something that builds up over time. Like hopefully, hopefully our savings account. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So so uh, that's that's the idea. Dopamine is more for excitement. Ox uh, treats is more of an excitable thing, whereas mm -hmm. petting, especially if we use the the right the right type of petting, you know, we're petting with the right energy, then mm -hmm. we get to the point where uh, we can we we can encourage calm. Is this this situation making you nervous? No. Well, oh, okay. I'm is just it just cold? Watching his reaction. I should go get a jacket. No, it, it's fine. I, and I'm not trying to say anything. I was just curious. I was watching the body language. Oh, yeah. You know, no, no, and no, I no, and yeah, I wanted to make sure that cheating. that you weren't that you weren't anxious about and, the situation because no, that's one of those. Him and yeah. He's not going after. Yeah. He's doing he's doing very well. Like I said, he's doing better than my dad is. <laughs> yeah, he's doing fine. I know. So I mean, that's really encouraging. Because okay. it's not such a uh, like a, a blanket issue to where he is going to get upset about all dogs mm -hmm. in all situations. Now, don't freak out. He's got one of those collars on that you don't like. I was uh, talking to your wife about that. Uh, these collars right here actually are more or are, are less damaging to the dog <coughs> than even the buckle collar that he's got on right here. No, if no. he pulls on the end of this, it's going to smash on his throat. <coughs> there you go. Yeah. He put a big old spike collar on him, and it's almost cruel. Oh, yeah, he has bigger spikes than that. Yeah, yeah. well, see, no, there never, no, there not? never needs to be any bigger than these. These mm -hmm. ones are the three millimeter ones. Okay. Um, they're they're kind of the medium to small because mm -hmm. they have several different stages. Mm -hmm. But like the ones that they sell at the big box yeah, store, like if you go to the, if you go to Walmart and you go to look at their prong collars. Their prong collars are gigantic. Mm -hmm. And and when you have, the bigger the prong is, the, the less of them that you can have going around the neck. Oh. And it's much better to have multiple, more of them around the neck. That way it distributes the pressure evenly. Mm -hmm. And the reason that the prongs are spread wide is also to distribute the pressure over a wider band. Mm -hmm. So it actually does almost, it, it does no damage to the dog when sized properly. Now, if you let it be all baggy, and you pull on it, then you just got like six prongs poking into their oh, throat, yeah. and that's bad. Yeah. We don't want that. But if they're sized properly, then they don't have an issue with that. So, what do you think? Here, I think, I think you can probably hold him, and that'll give me the opportunity to make sense, get out here and move around. So what I would have you do mm -hmm. is, what I would have you do is keep a fairly short leash. Yep. And then, you know, but the good news is, is he's not going to pull on this near as hard as he would pull on a regular collar. Okay. Because the harder he pulls, the worse it gets with. Now, but I do want you to not keep it tight unless oh, okay. he makes it tight. Unless he makes it right. tight. Right. So. Okay. Walk. Yeah. You being a bad dog today. Yes, you are. You got this. I'm seeing right now is anxiety mm -hmm. but not necessarily as negative of an anxiety you know like you know how you have anxiety before you get on a roller coaster right you know or before you get on stage to sing or any of those things and then it's not necessarily a negative experience it's just excitement mm -hmm. you know and anxiety and excitement are very close <coughs> to um, so he is uh, he's not showing the signs of really serious intense um, like negative anxiety from the dog. Now, positive anxiety can lead to the same situation. I mean, like, hey, you know, if you can get him behind you, that's always the, the okay. good thing. See, see him taking his position right there. Mm -hmm. That is an appropriate situation. Now, here's another thing that you can do to make the difference is if you actually turn your back on the dog, mm -hmm. then what it, and, and focus on him, then what it'll tell him is that I'm not concerned about this dog. Okay. You know, so like if he were my dog and he were looking to me for direction most of the time and a new dog came out, out and I ignored it, turned my back on it a number of times, then it, it will help communicate to him. I mean, like it's not a fix in and of itself. Nope. Nope. 
so okay. and let so so that puts you in the position of the protector mm -hmm. and it puts you in the position of the strength because we, we don't want him to feel like that's his job you know like it's his job when you're not around mm -hmm. like if somebody comes wandering in your property when you're not here do your business yeah. you know like that's that's what a dog's here for however whenever you're present it shouldn't be necessarily that um because you should be you know he should think he should um tip his hat to you and say you're the boss you get to decide when we fight you know um and that's that's the idea which will be almost never never you know like especially whenever it comes to other dogs mm -hmm. unless the dogs are in a bad way and they shouldn't be in the yard then at that point that's a dog right. doing what what, what, the what they're supposed to do, yeah. you know, it's like to protect the property and uh, to make, you know, to keep the boundary. Mm -hmm. um, and so we don't, I don't generally want the dog to let everybody in and out when I'm not here. Right. I don't care for that at right. all. Um, but I also really don't want whenever I invite somebody over for the dog to try to keep them out. Right. Like there's my line. That's mm -hmm. my rule is whenever I'm here, I'm in charge. And if I leave and ever, all the rest of the humans leave and somebody tries to come in and you're not aware of that, you know, like you're not prepared for them to be there, you don't know that they're allowed, mm -hmm. then, um, then yeah, sure, keep them out of the house. You know, even if it's a mistake, I would rather my dog keep them out of the house until I come and fix the problem mm -hmm. or I arrange for the problem to be fixed and say, hey, this is, you know, these people are allowed. Um, because I don't need anybody showing up and trying to get into my house whenever I'm not there, and if I'm not aware of it. I mean, does that yeah. seem seem like the yeah, same yeah. kind of rules you guys would like? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we can do that by maintaining the the relationship between him and you to make sure that he understands that you're the one that's in charge of the situation and that it's your job to protect. Whether you're actually going to do much protecting or not is is irrelevant. You can let him lay down. He's he's trying. To, he, that's fine. He'll lay down again. Just make sure that he's, his leash is not so tight that he can't. But um, we want to be the ones who decide when it's time when it's time to get fussy, because that is the dominant position. And all dogs understand from birth. It's it's just something they don't have to be taught it. Mm -hmm. That whoever is the strong one is the one who's in charge, and whoever's in charge is their job to look out for danger. And it's also their job to decide when we fight. Mm -hmm. You notice dogs, whenever they're in a pack, they don't just do whatever they want all individually. They all follow a leader. Mm -hmm. And the leader is the one that decides if we're going after this thing or not. And so if you can take that position as leader and express that to him non-verbally, mm -hmm. then, then he can start to let you make those decisions. Hey, back. <laughs> Are you getting fussy now? This one. That's why I got a stick. So keeping him behind you mm -hmm. is one of the one of the key things that because whoever's out front is the leader. Dogs okay. don't even know how to do it differently. Me, I'm the leader. Yeah. If you want to, go ahead and just like walk around with him and start changing directions and making him follow you. And it doesn't <coughs> matter what side he's on or anything like that the key is just for him to ignore this dog and follow your direction follow your lead it's a little chilly out today yeah last week we were out here sweating <laughs> right So now if we can get to the situation that every time his anxiety gets to the point that he starts to explode with some sort of a, an aggressive energy, mm -hmm. that it causes him some sort of a distress by being at the end of the collar and he gets stopped in that process, uh -huh. then that energy that he offers 
causes him negative. And it doesn't make his situation better, it makes his situation worse, and he'll stop offering that behavior. And then we can spend some time getting him in the presence of other dogs, you know, which we're already doing, which is great. And um, and then he can start to learn that that is uh, that dogs can be around. dogs can be around, and hopefully we get to the point to where we can start to get him to the point where he's actually willing to play mm -hmm. with other dogs. Because right now his his guard is down over him. Uh -huh. His guard's down. He's not. He, he's, he's like, not okay, here. this dog's been here for all this time, and he's not caused me any problems. Right. And I think the other thing too, like our neighbor's dog. He's a lab, but he's two years old, so mm -hmm. he's very hyper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. What you're doing, I don't know if you're doing it on purpose, but what you're doing is exactly right. We keep, you keep turning and going that direction. You turn around to come back, but you notice that he's getting in front of you, <laughs> and, and then you seem to be adjusting to that and walking again away from the situation and pulling it back off. That's exactly right. Is we can go over there and investigate it, but you've got to let me leave. Is what you're saying. It is what you should be saying to the dog. And what you're doing, I don't know if you're doing it on purpose, but you're doing that. And, yeah, no, that's great. That's awesome. You have a good instinct for this. Walk. job at not keeping the leash too tight that's that's good you want him to be able to make a decision and to have the consequence of that decision you know well, down <laughs> square dancing with the dogs yeah it's <laughs> square dancing with the dogs. grab your puppy a do, -si -do. <laughs> so Anyway, as far as the evaluation goes, I mean, like, he's completely doable. I mean, like, okay. it's not going to be an overnight right. thing. It'll be a process over time, but we can definitely do it. But if he can be that easily discouraged from mm -hmm. from leading this, uh, from getting out of the... Uh, hey. Cinch doesn't respond to the stick. I actually spend a lot of time desensitizing him so he doesn't rear away from things. Uh. But most dogs we don't do that with, and they're just like, oh, it's so like that, you know. Cinch down. Okay, so um let me see. Let me see him. So one of the things that we want to be able to do is to give him give him the space to, to make to make bad decisions. Okay. Just like raising a boy. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta leave them to hurt themselves a little bit. If you protect them too much, and then they don't ever learn how to protect themselves. Exactly. You know, uh, and it's the same thing with the with the dogs. Is like if we get to the point where we we get to the point where we can let them make little decisions. No. So like that. Stop it. That. Singe. Now, we can get him to let him make little decisions mm -hmm. and find out that they're wrong. Hey, down. Uh, but not like as if we're standing around like, like this the, and, and, and we are too scared of what could happen, then we don't allow him the opportunity to make good decisions as well as bad ones. Right. And whenever he makes them good, we communicate that they're good. Mm -hmm. When he makes them bad, we communicate that they're bad. But the good part about that is, is that um, that is a situation that we communicate non-verbal. Not so much verbal, mm -hmm. because verbal is just marked to a lot right. of dogs. I mean, now it can become the situation where it's not, but in, in general, to an untrained dog who doesn't have a lot of good vocabulary, words are just words. And so when we're when we're adding too much noise to an already intense situation, if we add that. next week. Okay. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, because um, I got a guy laying the floor. No, that's, that's fine. 
this is we we just wanted to do evaluation oh, yeah. Yeah. today and make sure that we knew what it is that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so what it'll end up being is, is we'll have I'll end up bringing him uh, while we start working on these things. Mm -hmm. And I think that yeah, I think that if we just go and start with the behaviorist lesson like we were what we were talking about, it's mm -hmm. like a three hour at least three hour lesson. We'll go through all of the tenants, mm -hmm. all of the communication practices. I will bring him along because obviously we can sit around and talk mm -hmm. with him here and he's not being such a fussy pants. Right. So is that gonna it. be three hours all in once or three? Yeah, it'll be it'll be oh, right oh. it'll be right together, we'll get it okay. all done and I'll make sure that better. huh? <laughs> Next week's better. Right, and then and I'll make sure that you have all of the tools that you need okay. to continue to communicate with them. And then after that, the work is just plenty of communication over time okay. and desensitizing from the situation. And if we do need to artificially manufacture a situation where we're bringing over dogs that we can control, mm -hmm. kind of, uh, you know, like yeah, he 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 is he is very controllable. It's just a matter he's been he's being a turd this morning, mm -hmm. but um, that way we can start to teach him that that you know that this behavior doesn't isn't necessary on a regular basis mm -hmm. then you can start taking him to dog parks and then we can get to the point to where he's just no longer dog aggressive and that is a possibility it's not without any risk you know oh, so no. there is always yeah. a little bit of risk and so we just accept that from the beginning and first of all dogs are pretty good at keeping themselves together mm -hmm. you know um and when you're going to a, a dog park situation we can start outside mm -hmm. and work our way back in and then we can get him we can get him all the way like I, I would imagine we could get him to the point where we could bring him over and he could run loose in the backyard with my dogs and right. then we take him to a dog park mm -hmm. and all that stuff but um it won't be a hugely intensive thing it'll be more i just need to make sure that you are on the page that you need to be to be able to communicate these things in your own time right. and then when you think that we need extra it, like it's a to really purposefully manufacture a situation mm -hmm. then uh so that he gets used to dogs then we can go ahead and do that okay so yeah that's cool so um, if, if this is something that you're sure that we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and leave the collar with you. Okay. Um, this, this is the right collar, and honestly, I would, uh, I would let that be. Anytime that I need to put him on a leash, I would use this collar. Okay. Um, I would be careful about how much time he gets outside on his own. I mean, uh, because, you know, because we don't want situations to show up while we're not here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Normally, like I said, we don't even have an issue of other dogs. And even um, the joggers, they sometimes come with their dogs. And he stays in the yard. Mm -hmm. You know, he stays where he's supposed to. He just barks at them. And they're right. all used to him by now. Yeah. Yeah, so I think this is going to be just fine. And I don't think we're going to have a whole lot of issue okay. in the situation. Okay. Um, do, do be mindful of your tension, like how nervous you get in the situation and mm -hmm. try your best not to have tight leashes. Yeah. Um, try your best to be willing to turn your back on whatever it is mm -hmm. that's new right. that you're not actually worried about mm -hmm. and be willing to be willing to step in and address him in the situation. Since no. Since no. just really, really wants to play. He's a friendly boy. <laughs> oh, he yeah, loves he it. does, yeah. <laughs> and at least he's not... <laughs> got his mouth open no he's he knows no, him. <laughs> oh yeah no he's doing good now i mean like it it, it could be a, a tentative thing where it could go from one to another but mm -hmm. we'll we'll figure that out when we have more time to mm -hmm. do it so, yeah. so. okay walk